Welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk here about one of the chronic leukemias, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And we're going to see that this does not happen in children. Okay, so this is going to be a grown-up with leukemia. However, there are some major differences between these chronic leukemias and acute leukemias, and they're going to be very apparent on presentation. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the I button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated and definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. All right, this is the blood cancer family tree. You can take it or leave it. But what I do wanna point out is that there is this hematopoietic kind of pathway, if you will, where we start out with this precursor blood stem cell. Um, and this is where we get all of these different cells in our blood, from, uh, from platelets to red blood cells to plasma cells to lymphocytes. It all starts with this precursor. And so anywhere along the line, as these cells are maturing, depending on where the mutation occurs, we can get these various hematologic malignancies or dyscrasias. Um, so when we're looking at a chronic leukemia, we're looking at a mutation and proliferation later down the line. And often, therefore, these cells will look mature, whereas with the acute leukemias, we see blasts. Um, so chronic lymphocytic leukemia is a chronic condition, meaning that it is not like acute leukemia where it can take you in a matter of months. Um, with these chronic leukemias, they come on very, very insidiously. Um, and so what you're looking at in your, blood, in your blood are mature but clonally proliferated uh, lymphocytes or myelocytes, depending on which chronic leukemia you're dealing with. So like CML, this is usually discovered on a routine blood test. Most of these patients are asymptomatic. What you will see is an isolated lymphocytosis. So you're not anemic, you're not thrombocytopenic, you see a high white count, and it's the lymphocytes that are elevated. And that can be considered the hallmark of CLL. So an isolated lymphocytosis, particularly in an older or even elderly person. It rarely presents with symptoms. When it does, they're very nonspecific. Your constitutional features, fatigue, weakness, low-grade fever, um, generalized painless lymphadenopathy. That's always a concerning sign when lymphadenopathy is painless. Splenomegaly, I read 50%. I'm not sure about that, but that's what I read. Hepatomegaly, recurrent infections. And this is not so much due to the white cells. It's more due to hypogamma globulinemia. So you're going to see very particular infections there that deal with um, in, uh, pathogens that we would normally uh fight with antibodies versus cell me uh, versus should say um, the innate immune system. In advanced disease you can get bone marrow infiltration, pancytopenia, um, it can start to look more like an acute leukemia. Median age of diagnosis is 70 years. So like I said, old, much older people, 90% of cases are older than 50 years. So this is not going to show up in a kid. Uh, generally, these patients are asymptomatic. It's detected by routine CBC. You're coming in, you know, maybe for you know, just getting routine labs like we do all the time. Uh, maybe this is an older person. They're coming in. Um, I don't know, you know, just reasons that you would come in to, to and, and have your blood drawn. Uh, maybe they're just not feeling good or maybe it, it might have something to do with something else completely. Um, so it's usually detected incidentally. The best initial diagnostic test, if for whatever reason you do suspect a chronic leukemia or a lymphoma or something like that, get a CBC with peripheral smear. Now, if you had a, an, an isolated lymph node that was non-tender and enlarged, you might go ahead and do a lymph node biopsy, uh, but they will make it very clear on your exam what you're dealing with. CLL is a very likely diagnosis in a patient with unexplained white cell elevation. Uh, what you will see is abundant mature lymphocytes. When you do your peripheral smear, that's super important. You've got to order that. It's separate on CCS. You've got to make sure you're ordering that. 
And the big thing is smudge cells. You might remember that from step one. So if you see smudge cells in a patient who's got a lymphocytosis, that is CLL until proven otherwise. However, most accurate test to confirm CLL is a flow cytometry. You can do that with peripheral blood. So um, what you would see, actually this pertains to something else. What you would see is CD5, CD19, CD20, and CD23. What stands out there? CD5, why? Because CD5 is a T cell marker and most CLLs are B cells. So the fact that we see CD5 along with these B cell markers is very strange and it's very, I shouldn't say very specific, but it's quite specific uh, for CLL, okay? So having that CD5, we call that an aberrant B cell expression of CD5, very characteristic. So we got two things. We've got this, or three things. We've got the ele elevated white count, unexplained in an older person. We got smudge cells, and we got this aberrant B cell expression of CD5. But remember, this will only be detected on flow cytometry. That's why we do it. These are smudge cells right here, right here. Uh, maybe this one. Oh, and this one. Okay, so these just look like squashed cells, like if you were to step on one of these lymphocytes. So you can see more here. And these are different from atypical lymphocytes, by the way. All right, now with CLL, uh, we do not treat asymptomatic patients. It has not been shown to improve survival. However, once they become symptomatic, they get anemic, they start to get a lot of infections, um, they're getting petechiae, then we go ahead and treat it. Now, this is not likely to be tested on your exam, so I'm not even gonna talk about it, but I put it here just for you to know. Now, one thing that may be tested Rituximab. What is rituximab? Rituximab is a monoclonal antibody that targets CD20. And CD20 is expressed in CLL. So rituximab is a very useful medication here. We commonly use it in B cell malignancies because they tend to express CD20. It's also used in autoimmune conditions because basically what we're doing is we're selectively going in with a gun and we're shooting off all the B cells. Um, so because immunotherapies, and we're talking here targeted immunotherapies, new drugs coming out all the time, they've largely supplanted the cytotoxics, so you're very unlikely to be asked about CLL chemotherapy. Uh, however, I would say this is low yield, but if you want to remember it, it may, may come up, maybe, doubtful. Complications, chemo-related side effects, um, so... Uh, particularly with fludarabine and a lot of immunotherapy drugs, you can get reactivation of latent viral infections like CMV, hypogammaglobulinemia, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Um, so with the autoimmune hemolytic anemia, ITP, and pure red blood cell aplasia, they're not super common, but they can happen. Prednisone. Okay, very easy. And then we have something called the Richter transformation. Basically what that is, is you have a chronic leukemia and it turns either into an acute leukemia, less commonly, or most commonly a diffuse large B cell lymphoma, which is a type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And the way that you would suspect this is if you have a sudden onset of B symptoms in the either um, while we're watchfully waiting on the patient or while we are uh, treating the patient with chemotherapy. So to recap, what we're dealing with here with CLL is a clonal proliferation of B-cell lymphocytes. Um, it tends to be asymptomatic. Um, when you do have symptoms, they tend to be very nonspecific, constitutional signs. Best initial test is a CBC. Show the isolated lymphocytosis, which can be considered a hallmark. Smudge cells, uh, which you'll see on peripheral smear. The most accurate test is a flow cytometry. Um, what you'll see is the aberrant expression of CD5 on the B cells, along with the traditional B cell markers. That's very highly suggestive. Uh, I will say before you start therapy, if you are to start therapy, uh, get a bone marrow biopsy. It's generally a good idea. Uh, if they're asymptomatic, they're observed. We don't treat them until they become symptomatic. You're unlikely to be tested on specific chemotherapy uh, for CLL. Um, but do know that because CLL expresses CD20, rituximab is often, the part, uh, often part of the therapy.